two goals there really against the run of play and they've gone out of the game again since then. It's been uh, one of the Galway failings really, we think about the match matches recent times, they've gone ahead and then they've drifted back. They can't afford to do that against Kilkenny because Henry Shefflin is leading the attack once again here, Richie Parr coming onto it, Joe Canning back helping out, goes as far as TJ Reid, slipping past. After him goes Fergal Moore, right on the sideline, and that one uh, was a very, very tight angle for him. Just a little bit too sharp that time, and missed by TJ Reid, who scored already, and it remains 1-10 for Kilkenny, 2-2 for Galway. And Galway looked like they could and did are about to make a change here, and that is uh, Joseph Cooney, son of Joe, who is a defender who will come in if needs be in the next couple of minutes. In as far as Richie Hogan this time, wearing number nine, playing it full forward, and such a smart operator, really gifted player. He's very much a big game performer, and he's made it 1-11 to 2-2. 12 scores for Kilkenny, still only four for Galway, and they've gone a long, long time now, Galway without scoring, since the 17th minute. Yeah, Jaron, that's all the Kilkenny forwards now have scored from play, you know, which is some different from the last day, where a lot of them were out of the game. They've all started brilliantly. But they're dominating out the field, they're just a monopoly on possession right around their half-back line, middle of the field, and Galway just can't get their hands on the ball. And, and you know, Joe Canning's out centre-forward now, but there's no shape to them. The Here are the goals once again, that was the first one by David Burke, followed it in, the second one was beautifully created and expertly finished, they were delighted. But this was a response at the other end. It was by uh, Owen Larkin initially and then Richie Power after the save by James Skehel. So 111 to 2 2. Yeah, and it's uh, now some nine minutes or so since uh, Galway last scored. It was a crucial, you know, when Galway got that first goal, Mark David Hurry just picked the ball out of the net and poked it out immediately to Tommy Walsh and they ended up, TJ Reid scored a point from that and they got back on the front foot straight away and it just reacted. They didn't dwell on it and look at they're producing another awesome display here now and Galway really. They need, it, they need to get a score or two just to settle themselves down and get back into the game. As in the last match, only two players have scored for Galway so far. David Burke with the two goals, Joe Canning with the two points from Freeze. And they've got another free now on the 45-metre line, Kilkenny's 45-metre line. So a chance to get one back. They are six behind at this stage. And we're about eight minutes to go to half-time. So ten minutes, really, since Galway got their last score. And that, their second goal by David Burke. Joseph Cooney's coming on, and the player is going off is Niall Burke. So Niall Donoghue, I should say, is uh, the player who's uh, gone off, one of the Niles. Niall Donoghue, the uh, wing-back from Kilbacanty, making way. Joseph Cooney from Sarsfields in Galway is on. Yeah, I'd, you know, Neil Dunham has had a very good year, he's a good young player, but he's caught, caught possession a little bit and the movement of the Kilkenny forwards really finding him out, so big move now to bring on Joseph Cooney and Joe Canning, great catch there, showed great leadership really, and you know, just there's a lot of time left in the game, there's six points down, but it's a good time to be behind, it gives them a chance to get back into the game. An important free and an important score, third pointed free by Joe Canning. So they've gone 10 or 11 minutes without scoring, they have one back now, they're back within five. And Brian Hogan, by the way, has changed his jersey, he's now wearing number 31 and playing centre-half back as per usual. David Herity's puck out. Big one up, David Collins trying to cut it out, but all the breaking balls been picked up there by Kilkenny players, that time it was by Killian Buckley. Played under 21 against Clare recently when they lost that final in Thurley some two weeks ago. The Jerry, you know, kicked. There's, Kilkenny have scored eight points from play. Galway have scored no points from play. It's hard to believe a half an hour into an Ireland final, three frees is all they've got and two goals. You know, they really need to be popping over a couple of handy points, but they're not winning possession. You see it again here now. Kieran Joyce, a great catch. Fabulous catch. Good ball in towards Richie Power once again, but this time broken down and taken by Fergal Moore. Drag to the ground, gets himself up quickly, pursued by Walter Welch, helped out here by Johnny Cohen. Big long clearance downfield, beautifully caught under pressure by Jackie Tyrrell. Out as far as Tommy Welch. Into space, there's nobody playing right corner forward at this stage, Tommy. So it's going to be a line ball to Galway. Some uh, five and a half minutes or so to go to half time. Well, the catching is superb, and there you saw Kieran Joyce, and we've had uh, 
Jackie Tyrrell involved as well. So good in the air, Kilkenny. So powerful. They've come here with a very, very strong attitude, a determination that they were going to get it right. Third time of asking against Galway. Johnny Cohen, poor line ball, straight to Henry Shefflin. Inside it goes towards Walter Welch, bundled off, but the referee says play on. Johnny Cohen does, takes it across here, dangerously so, and the referee has uh, blown his whistle. A Hurley was uh, thrown there, I think, lost anyway. And referee James McGrath from the uh, Turin Hurling Club in Westmeath calling across. And I think he's just given a free out here. Well, I think he was actually, if Michael Finley threw the hurl, uh, it's a yellow card. I think he was waiting to book him, but Michael Finley just ran off out the field. If you just watch it here. <laughs> Yeah, there's the hurley yeah. being thrown. That should yeah. have been a yellow card. a yellow card. And I think he was going to give a yellow card, but Michael Finley just kept going out the field and he blew the whistle to call him back in and he didn't come. That and was, now that he's was after going after him, you're right. James Gell has taken the free, but he'd have to take it again because the referee wants to complete the uh, paperwork here. And uh, he's got Michael Finley, the 27-year-old <laughs> from Ballyhale Shamrocks. Way below his best in the drawn match. Remember, he's hurler of the year from 2011. He's got a yellow card here now. Back in his 21st championship match today. So James McGrath has now issued a first yellow card to a Kilkenny player. And I think he's given uh, three yellow cards in all. Or is it uh, two? It's two yellow cards to Galway players. James Cahill and Niall Donoghue. From that free. Back there is Paul Murphy gathering its second attempt, clearing it away once again. No nonsense, no fuss. Such a good cornerback. Up to Walter Welch, who gives this team some direction. This time taken by Johnny Cohen. Played back again by David Collins. Down into the corner, nobody waiting for it down there. So there's a chance for the uh, fullback, JJ Delaney, to go, collect, deliver, and hammer it upfield. Cooney beaten. That was brilliantly taken in the air there by Richie Hogan in midfield. Was drifted out. Brian Hogan, his namesake, now wearing number 31 in the yellow helmet, making some progress, fancying a point himself, and it's stopped on the line by James Skehel. And Skehel stumbles, Walter Welch coming in, and the goalkeeper in difficulty, helped out by David Collins. And the goalkeeper and the uh, full forward tangled for a moment. Thankfully, it has uh, ceased, and play continues. Well, that could have been a very embarrassing moment there for James Skehel. Meanwhile, in the middle of the field, it's Earl Tanyan hitting it, but hitting it to the left and putting it wide. In spite of those two goals, in the space of 60 seconds, it's been a poor first half for Galway. Yeah, if you watch James Skehel here, he just brought the ball down, he had lots of time, it's not to do with the shoulder, it just feet went from under him, and very, very lucky, but he did manage to... Kevin, uh, Kevin Hines came in and saved his blushes, but again, Earl Tanyan with a nice, you know, an easy enough chance to tap it over the bar. We saw Niall Burke earlier, and you know Galway really haven't settled down at all. Could, could have been a free in there because I mean he did pull down the forward after he stumbled with that ball. Play continues anyway, and it's out here as far as Owen Larkin once again. Back now as far as the goal scorer for Kilkenny, Richie Power, and that one doesn't carry sufficiently for him and goes left. Yeah, John, I'm not sure how comfortable James Gehl looks after that. You know, to me, if you dislocate, look at his arm the way he's holding it there, his left shoulder and. Uh, you know, if you dislocate his shoulder. So Johnny Glynn, number 19, is coming on in place of James Regan, who didn't really make any impact whatsoever in the 33 minutes that he was on. Johnny Glynn is intent on making an impact. That's interesting that Galway forced to make two changes before we reach half-time, and that's a statement of way, the way things have been going for them. All or nothing at this stage for Galway. They're only five points back, however, and that gives them a right good chance, even though they're playing poorly, and Kilkenny have been much the better team. Richie Power. Back out as far as Richie Hogan. Uh, that one again to the left. Those two goals have been absolutely critical, I would argue, in keeping Galway afloat in this final. Exactly, Ger. Not they're five points down and you, know, you see there Kilkenny have had a couple of wides there now in the last few minutes they're really dominating the game apart from a couple of minutes when Galway got those two goals and yet Galway are only five points down so you know it's, it's not all it's not all over but they really have to start getting a foothold around the particular under half forward and there's a lot of movement from the forwards but they're just now winning possession well this time Johnny Glynn has got in there he's a big strong 19 year old wearing number 19 as well 
this time helped by Joe Canning. Can he give the leadership? That one is going away to the right-hand side, but it might yet come good, and could do so for Cyril Donnellan, his first touch was four, and it enabled the half-back there, Tommy Welch, to go back and to get that ball away. In fact, it was eventually Killian Buckley, another man with a red helmet, who cleared it. And he had as far as Sir Tirla Tanyan, and Tanyan has put it to the left, and he's put it wide. There was a chance there just a moment ago, but the first touch by Cyril Donnellan wasn't good enough, and it gave... Kilkenny a chance to go in and clear it's going to be one minute of added time played and we're into that now but that was a great chance again you know the ball broke all Sir Lennon has to do is you know pick the ball and he, he had an open goal in front of him and he ran straight over it and here Latanian again with another very poor wide from only 50 yards out here comes David Collins can Galway now get the last score of this first half give them something to build upon for the second period Cyril Donnellan JJ Delaney is on him, Cyril Donlan, and that one has gone in there and it's uh, gone off the defender and it's gone for a 65, first of this match, very late in the game. Cyril Donlan meaning business there, taking on JJ Delaney and finally the goalkeeper, who is David Herity, pulled it away for the 65. So a chance for Joe Canning to put it over and leave just four points between the teams which would be a huge boost for Galway and leave Kilkenny probably scratching their heads wondering how come Galway are this close to them. Joe Canning with three so far, all from freeze. And this one is straight over. And that is the last point and last score of the first half. Joe Canning with four then, but the all-important goals came for David Burke, 16 minutes and 17 minutes. That is the platform upon which Galway can build something, but Kilkenny were much, much the better team during the first half. Kilkenny got 11, got 12 scores in all. James Cahill is leaving the field, I can tell you, looking a little bit the worse for wear with his shoulder, but uh, Kilkenny, with that goal by Richie Power after 90 minutes, that was a big boost for them. They've been the better side during the opening 35 minutes of action. But who's going to win the Liam McCarthy Cup for 2012? A lot to talk about. Our panel will have much to say. And the second half coming your way at half time. It's Kilkenny 1-11, Galway, two goals and four. We'll be back in a moment.